Now, a rare geomagnetic storm caused a spectacular sight right across the country and across the night sky this weekend. Pink, purple and green hues, they were captured from the top of the country in the far north all the way down south. This morning we've seen a handful of those pictures coming in, so thank you very much and we'll show you some of them later on. Uh, but why are we seeing these lights and why did TransPower issue a grid emergency? Joining us now is Craig Roger, he's a professor of physics at the University of Otago. Thank you very much for joining us this morning, Craig. Um, um, Northern Lights, Southern Lights, and now they're just sort of everywhere lights. What's happening? Well, it turns out that there was a series of explosions on the sun, which threw out a bunch of material out into space. We call that a coronal mass ejection, or uh, popularly known as a solar tsunami. And that material was directed towards the Earth. So it took about a day and a half to travel from the sun to the Earth, and then it started crashing into our magnetic field. Um, and that energizes the magnetic field of the Earth, boosts up the aurora so it's brighter and more dynamic and interesting but most importantly for us moves that aurora away from antarctica towards new zealand and so um this event started at about five o'clock in the morning on saturday of course most of us didn't see that because um you know we were still in bed and, and it took a while before the sun came up but by the time the sun went down on saturday night it was still blasting away and so we had the chance to see the aurora Okay, so even when when it's night time and the sun on the sunny side of the earth, does it, does the massive big mass ejection of light and stuff does it go around the globe and then hit us when it's night time? It crashes into the front of the magnetic field of the earth and then processes inside the uh, magnetic field system that uh, the earth's magnetic field system triggers the aurora. So the aurora can be occurring on the day side and the night side. It's just not bright enough for us to see during the day. Uh, but we, you know, once once the sun goes down, there it was, very clear. And how rare is it? Does this happen often? Um, coronal mass ejections strike the Earth quite often, but this was such a big one. It was the rarest. It was declared by the United States uh, NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center as a G5 class storm. The last one of those was in October 2003, so 21 years ago. In terms of the New Zealand magnetic field, we haven't seen anything like this for over 25 years. Can you tell me why it's clearer through like a camera lens or a phone camera lens than it is through your eyes? Um, the amazing uh, progress in technology. Uh, basically, modern uh, phone cameras and uh, high quality uh, cameras are more sensitive than our eyes. And so it can pick out more detail and get the colours better. And why the, why the different colours? Because some were green, some were purple, some were pink. Is it, is it just our eyes? Or no, well, <laughs> what's, uh, the, what's the reason? The aurora is literally different colours. So the particles that are penetrating very deeply, and by deeply I mean maybe 120 kilometres altitude, um, that causes the atmosphere to grow, glow in colours like green. But the slightly less energetic is arriving at a higher altitude, like more like 200 kilometres, maybe 250 kilometres. And up there the atmosphere glows red. And why does it dance around? You saw some of them and they move around and dance. Is that I, just the, the process of the solar storm hitting us? The, yes, and that's actually because these are charged particles, electrons and protons, so they're guided by the magnetic field of the Earth. But the magnetic field of the Earth is very, very disturbed because we're having this big storm, and that causes the particles to be, to be moving around and therefore the lights to be drifting. Are there any health concerns? Like, are we being zapped with radiation? Um, you would have to get up really high to be zapped with radiation in these sort of in these sort of events. Okay, and and Transpower put out an, an issue about it might affect the power lines, and it, I think it um, shut down some of its power transmission lines. Why is that? Can it affect our grid? Yes. So extremely large magnetic storms, and this would be an example of a, an event that was large enough to be a little bit concerned about, but not large enough to cause. Uh, a really serious impact. Because the magnetic field is changing, there's a physics law called Faraday's law, which says that a changing magnetic field will induce currents on the electrical conductor. The electrical network is just this huge collection of conductors, so we end up with currents being induced in the network which aren't meant to be there. And about two years ago, Transpower and uh, my, one of my students and I helped develop that plan that they enacted on Saturday to shut down some of their transmission lines, remove them from service, to decrease the uh, size of those currents and thereby help protect our network. And do you know if there was any um, impact at all on the network? 
My understanding is that all customer supply continued as normal, i.e. the people in the control room worked hard, possibly had a little bit of sweat on the brow, but um, that the electricity supply was unaffected. And in terms of um, forecasting it, are we, are we going to see more of it this week or was the weekend that's it? At the moment, there is a forecast from the NOAA Space Weather Prediction Centre that another coronal mass ejection is likely to occur uh, maybe tonight, maybe in the next 24 hours. Um, where it's one of those areas that is actually quite difficult to forecast accurately when the coronal mass ejections will arrive. So there is another possibility. I would be surprised, I would be very surprised if it was a good, as good as Saturday night, though. If you live in the lower South Island, I'd be saying there's a reasonable chance of aurora. If you live in the upper North Island, I really hope you saw it on Saturday because it could literally be another 10 years before we get a show that good. Should we be concerned that there are big explosions on the sun? Um, probably not, because it's been happening for billions of years, and we seem to have got away with it. I mean, there are issues in terms of the possible impacts on our technology, and it's an area that we are learning more about, both in New Zealand and across the world. These are such big phenomena that they're global phenomena. But um, it's not something that keeps me, uh, you know, awake at night that there are explosions on the sun. The sun is just this amazing, huge, burning ball of gas. Wow. I mean, thank you very much. You've, um, you've, you've explained that all incredibly well. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you good luck much. for your 8 a.m. lecture. That is Professor of Physics at the University of Otago, Crane, uh, Craig Roger. Um,